So the doctrine of discovery is this, uh, it really has its, or it's a political doctrine, has its origins in the 16th century. Uh, and the idea is that as Europe is uh, exploring lands unknown to Europe heretofore, um, if it can be said to have discovered those lands, which is to say, if there doesn't seem to be anybody else there, then those lands are effectively theirs. Um, are the term no man's land, the, the, the term in Latin is terra nullius, uh, land belonging to nobody. As long as it belongs to nobody, um, it can be the property of whoever finds it. Um, now, of course, the, the, the promulgators of the doctrine of discovery understood that there were human beings living in the places that were said to be empty. Um, so there were caveats. And one of them was, well, what we mean by it's nobody's is nobody has improved upon the land. Nobody's built anything lasting there. Nobody's um, changed it in any significant way. It is in its virgin state. Therefore, the people are more or less flora and fauna. Um, and if that's the case, right, if nobody's built anything of worth or lasting, then um, it belongs to uh, the, the, the nation that, that finds it. Um, and then the nation who finds it is, uh, you know, given full license to remake that land in the image of old Europe, right? We, um, we call New England, New England. <laughs> we call, uh, we, there, are, there are, I was talking about a moment ago about the U.S. is a new promised land. The promised land in the Hebrew Bible is the land of Canaan. There are 20 new Canaans in the U.S. There are 20 towns called New Canaan in the U.S. So you don't have to go far to understand that um, this was the idea. The idea was go find land that nobody else seems to have claim to, claim it and remake it in the image of the old, of the old country. Um, this doctrine of discovery uh, underwrote the uh, seizure of the Americas, the Caribbean, and then, as you know, you know the early uh, the early American nation state occupied uh, more or less the eastern seaboard of of North America. Um, in the 19th century, um, we get an increasing number of appeals to you know push farther and farther west. The the boundary, the frontier, has been pushing west, but there's a this sort of concerted effort um, to push west, particularly uh, in pursuit of gold. Um, and there, the operative political doctrine is known as manifest destiny. Um, and manifest destiny means, <laughs> effectively, God wants European descended Americas to have the entire continent. That's what it means. Um, what do the words mean? The words mean um, it is the destiny of these chosen people. Again, these, this, this, the, the new people of God, the God with whom God has made this new, new covenant, um, to have this entire land. And we know because... Gosh, those people are doing so well. <laughs> like light-skinned Americans are just kicking ass, right? They're like absolutely destroying everything in their path, the forests, the folks. Um, so therefore, unlike the destiny of, say, Israel, which is always kind of a little like up in the air, like, oh, gosh, did, did God really make a promise with them? They've suffered so much. It's not really clear. Like it's a very hidden destiny. It's like a secret destiny. The destiny of Americans is manifest. It's clear. Um, so it's unbelievable. It's this like real act of um, theological bravado to to say like this is God is God is not working secretly here. God is working manifestly. Um, okay. Um, then old space race. So the uh, old the frontier is declared closed at the very end of the nineteenth century. Um, 1950s, uh, Werner von Braun, the, the uh, ex Nazi rocket scientist, now uh, working for the U.S. Um, declares that there is going to be an opening of a new frontier in outer space. And this will be, he says, the last frontier because it's an infinite frontier. Um, and suddenly, the, 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 rhetorically, the hope was to, um, you know, re-enliven post-war Americans who were sort of weary and sad and had no future and be like, no, no, we're moving. There's a new place. There's a new place. We can reignite the American dream. We've got new frontier fantasies. Um, and Werner von Braun himself said that it was uh, the manifest destiny of Americans uh, to conquer the heavens, to conquer outer space um, for political freedom, uh, for scientific advancement, um, for military dominance, and perhaps most surprisingly, um, for uh, the salvation of souls. Um, Werner von Braun became a, uh, a, an evangelical uh, convert, a born-again Christian when he was on American soil, um, and thought that it was America's duty to spread the gospel to nations out in people in extraterrestrials out in outer space. Um, okay. Some of that language that, you know, very straightforward sort of Christianly underwritten 
you are supposed to take this land because God says so, and there's effectively nothing on it anyway, therefore you should take it, um, can still be found in, say, the speeches of Mike Pence in 2019 as he was um, uh, declaring that NASA was going to go back to the moon and then to Mars. Um, In Donald Trump's State of the Union address, uh, he actually calls space America's manifest destiny very clearly. So that stuff is there. It's there. Um, But it's not that interesting. What I find more interesting now, because the gravitas has changed, because, again, when 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 Pence, you know, appeals to Psalm 139, most of the like the Bernie bros aren't like, oh, yay, Psalm 139. Like, that's not interesting to the Bernie. It's not interesting to a great deal of the American electorate. Um, I don't think that's where the, the, the gravitas and the power are. Um, The place where the power is now is not so much in the nation state and not so much in this explicit Christian doctrine, but rather in the hands of these private actors, these very charismatic CEOs who are using a different tactic. And it's it's still what I would call a religious tactic. We still have mythology. We still have ritual. We still have. um, But instead, they're selling these kinds of these like private revelations again, about the certainty of coming disaster and the promise of like an infinite future in a new land somewhere else. But they're not explicitly hooking it into the uh, destiny of the nation state and they're not explicitly hooking it into Christian rhetoric, except insofar as like, you're about to be destroyed, you'd better get saved as Christian rhetoric. But it's not, you know, not any more specific than that. 